is from the Asia Pacific regions, the Europe regions as well as China so one slot up for grabs between Optic and DC and it is Optic leading 1-0 so uh, you mentioned BSJ favoring uh, Optic's drafts ever so slightly here I mean for DC any kind of key heroes that you feel like can step it up are going to have a uh, be like the key playmakers for them to do a lot this game well I feel like the Prophet has a tough time later on in the game because of the clock work and the, the storm spirit offering just tons of catch on them, but those heroes, the clock needs six and needs hook, and the storm spirit needs items. So I feel like if they can make this profit snowball in the early game, uh, take a lot of early towers, and maybe look for some early rotations with this Rubik Slardar into the lanes of Puck and Viper, then I think that's their way of winning. I think they just have to have this profit have a huge impact before the storm and clock are able to keep picking them off. All right. Well, here we go. DC grouped up as five. Last game we didn't see any of those big five-man level one smokes. Definitely feels like a different opening for most teams because you don't have those level one tps you don't get those early wards down the bounty rent position has changed and this time around it does look like dc as well as maybe optic are going to be looking for some early like smoke moves into the enemy side of the map yeah both sides are just very careful right now no, no one wants to reveal anything they don't want to really hide their lanes right now and i think the biggest thing about dc's lineup right now that worries me is the supports i feel like if the supports aren't able to get off to a good start it's going to be really rough for them when it comes to the mid game. They're just going to be two somewhat useless heroes that just die almost instantly to this to the storm and uh, and clockwork. That is kind of demon dota though. He just picks heroes that roam together and they look to snowball off kills. That's what he. That's just his play style. That's what they love to do is let the kills early snowball off of it. Like you said, if they don't get much done in the early game, I feel like it is going to be very difficult for them to get any items yep. for them to at least control the map very quickly. Is it the same for the Ench though, where you need to be finding those kills and putting a lot of pressure on, or do you think there's like more room for error there? I feel like he can look for kills, but more importantly, it's just, I feel like if Optic Gaming secures their lanes, then they're in a much better spot, so I, I feel like he'll be more so counterplaying the support play of the DC, yep. Rubik Slaughter, or more, like you see here, he's playing around mid lane as Rubik is too. I think he'll just be trying to follow them and allow his, da or his uh, Terra Blade and Storm Spirit to get off to a good start. Yeah, he just comes in, goes to right-click, so you don't get any neutrals now till one minute in, which is perhaps a bit annoying as a jungler, but does uh, help, as you say, secure those lanes a bit, and we'll see where some of these other lanes go. Terrorblade at bottom, not going to have the easiest time against this Nature's Prophet Slider dual lane, even with the Dazzle support. It is a lane where DC are trying to apply some of that pressure. Well, so far, everything seems to be going pretty decently for Optic, just leading by a little bit gonna have to wait and see how these supports do against each other i think this uh enchantress versus slardar rubik is going to be really important for both sides yeah and on the other side it's optic with the enchantress making early moves towards top this is the viper this is definitely the lane that's perhaps most exposed in this early game with both supports uh hovering around this mid lane slider earlier in the bottom lane so with a couple of neutral creeps we could see some early rotations but it's mid lane with cc and c finding three heroes nearby will not Succumb to that rotation. Slider. Yeah. Meanwhile, top, they're looking for the Viper with a couple of neutral creeps. Gets trapped in a cogs. The tornado on top of him only needs the one neutral creep, and Mason going to give up first blood. Misery finding the exposed lane. Didn't even have the ensnare with him, but found an easy kill. And Demon, geez, Demon at this tower just going to melt to this tornado. He needs to be careful himself. Making this lane very tough. He did drop a ward now to try and help protect this Viper from that kind of move, but not a hero that is going to uh, necessarily fare too well if the Enchantress keeps coming up there. Mid lane, meanwhile, CCNC jumped on. It's going to take a lot of damage here, but should be A OK. -okay. Oh, he got a self cancel. Whoa. Popped it too early there, as that right click was not going to finish him off as well. That one definitely hurts. This might be a big problem for CCNC now. I think Quakefo is going to be a big problem for optic gaming with that with that play yeah and this is where it feels like optic have opted to try and pressure the top lane the viper but meanwhile dc say we don't care if this viper dies once or twice as long as this mid lane goes really well for the puck this storm is not getting much farm at all bottom lane meanwhile terra blade the initial it's a, a killer top a solar killer that zai taking out the rubik this clockwork is off to a fantastic start top cs has a bottle already 13 cs two kills Sai is getting kind of out of control here. Well, he's going and looking for more. He's good at Quelling Blade. He may just Tango his way through. Nope, doesn't get all the way in there. That Tornado proved to be very difficult to deal with. 
Yeah, and this kind of goes back to the whole thing about these two supports. They just really feel lackluster when when you pick them together. Like, there's no damage, really, and not exactly the greatest of core partners to set up for. Uh, something you mentioned, BSJ, was like, you want to get this clock at the, the level 6 early on, because that is going to be key for dealing with, like, the Nature's Prophet. And with a, a solo lane and a clockwork doing this well, he's going to start to snowball, I imagine. Oh, absolutely. But this is what is so ridiculous about the champions, especially in the current match. Oh, game. man, another kill. This is this just ha this happened to me yesterday, or two days ago in our match. It, it, it sets up so many easy dives, and it enables heroes like clockwork that you may see in the past struggle as like a single solo off laner, but this like bolster that uh, the Enchantress gives you, it just makes it so easy. She, she isn't spending very much time in lane, so he gets all of his levels, and then she just shows up with a creep, and it's easy easy pickings, honestly. Most carries are very vulnerable in this, and that's what I was talking about in the draft. It's just scary to play against. And we're seeing a lot of these teams kind of sack their carries more and more, where it's like supports go roam on mid, four positions go hop out the off lane, so constantly these safe lane carries, players like Mason are kind of on their own, and well, he's getting punished for that very fact. As they are down three kills to nothing, it is an optic lead off of the landing stage. Perhaps some good news is that the Puck is faring very well against the Storm, but Storm is still getting some experience, some levels, hasn't hasn't died in this mid lane, and can always fall back to the jungle a bit to farm. Rotation's constantly coming his way. The fact they can't kill the Storm, to me, is a, suggests there's a lot of wasted time here with uh, Demon and Bulba both constantly at this mid. Yeah, that's kind of like the big issue, too, with this with this uh, early game for, for DC. They're just putting way too much uh, stock into this puck right now, and both of their side lanes not exactly doing too great. I think MSS is actually doing okay, though. But Viper not really having the greatest of time might be a big issue for him later on. Yeah. Do you feel like the MSS on the Nature's Prophet should start rotating pretty early on, Steven? Or is he going to be like... Just statically trying to win his lane. I feel like it's such a difficult choice to make because when you're against a hero like Terrorblade, you're going to sacrifice so much. Well, here's the rotation. He's come top. They want to punish Zai, who's maybe overstayed his walk with four heroes coming top. They finally managed to get the best of this clockwork. But a bit too eager there with that dive and the Observer Ward perhaps helping give them a lot of info as to what was going on. That was such a good time for him to go there, though. <laughs> yeah, Because I, I was just about to say, oh, when you're yeah. against a hero like Terrorblade, you run that risk of taking so much tower damage. Yeah. And it, it was kind of less about him making a rotation, him more reacting to Optic, getting uh, overly aggressive there. So Zai so instantly TP's back up top. He was like one creep away from level six. That's going to make a big difference. It looks like with this bounty rune, he's going to find it and could find some easy kills here, although Rubik not the ideal target because of that telekinesis. Well, they're going to take this tier one tower, though. This is going to be quite problematic for DC. This is pretty much giving up their entire jungle at this point. And I think Misery's going to have a good time farming their side of the map. Again, rotations toward mid. Bulba sneaks his way through the mid lane, looking for the CCNC Storm Spirit, who is not quite level 6. And Clockwork in the jungle, running into the Viper here. Oh, they want to kill CCNC. Zai trying to... Mid lane, though. He's yeah, going to get lane. caught out here. Oh, they missed a coil, though, somehow. Well, they but may I think they'll the still kill. get it. Yeah, they get the silence up. Bulba getting low, but doesn't go down there. The Storm finally picked off with the constant pressure there. Is shutting down just this Storm Spirit going to be enough? Do you feel BSJ? Do they need to do more? Is this early game? How's it going for, for DC? I think that counter rotation was exactly what they needed in the, t in the safe lane, but this is, this is his last match with all these extra creeps. Yeah. Going on the mid lane here, using, utilizing that to get on the prop and shutting down that push. They instantly lift him out though, so it looks like MSS should be able to survive his way through this one. And if this stops the push, and I think that's the most important thing because as a mid laner, when you fall behind like this, um, like you said, they're already shutting him down. But if they keep the tower alive, then he'll still have the space to recover because it makes it they don't lose map control even though he is dying. And this is kind of the story of the mid lane this patch with all the denies changes. That uh, one here is going to be two levels ahead of the other. But this isn't last patch where there's all these extra creeps. So having the side lanes go as well as they do for Optic, I, I definitely think it's not enough to just shut down this one. Yeah. Yeah, all those denies have given this puck a big experience advantage, but Storm's being able to at least still get level 6, can fall into that jungle a bit. And these side lanes are looking pretty good for Optic. They didn't quite get that tier 1 bottom tower with the Terrorblade Metamorph, Nature's Prophet throwing the ultimate to try and slow down that push, but it is Optic really putting a lot more pressure on these lanes. They took the top tier 1, they almost took down bottom, and they've kind of set themselves up to have a lot of vision around this bottom area. They're all grouped up down here. Yeah, I think Clockwork they're looking has smoke. hook in a couple of seconds too, maybe looking for this this Viper. Oh, Mason, he's hiding away. Let's see if they can find him here. He's going to TP out. I think he's gone. He's TPing to his tier one. Perhaps feeling a push might be coming in. 
even though they changed Viper's W, he's kind of the same hero that he used to always be where he, he wants to fight you. He wants you to just run into him and basically die on him. And he's a hero that doesn't flash farm. He does fast form faster than he used to, but I think that you're seeing the way Optic's playing, they're just trying to dodge. They're, they're just, like, they're pressuring towers only for the purpose of making DC deal with it. And I think that because of the way the late game plays out, where Storm Spirit and Terror Blade can just outfarm the heroes of DC, that DC's on a timer here, and I, I don't exactly know what they want to do with this Viper, because he's kind of scared to go into towers, because they have a way of killing him, but at the same time, he can't flash farm and keep up with the Storm and Terror Blade, so this just makes it very difficult. Uh, and you're seeing here, DC feels pressured to do something, they're smoking up to Yeah. Yeah, they smoke up. Slider's only level 3 here, but Puck with a Veil can do a lot of damage here, so... Coil could easily set up that slider to get in nice and close for a crush. They're going to find a courier, not really perhaps the ideal target to go, go for here. PPD also not really the ideal target, but they may just take what they can get. Bulba doesn't have the sprint for a couple of seconds here. We'll get this done, and that's going to be an easy pickoff. Oh, Nature's Profit even instantly. coming down for it, and yeah, there's the TP. Our Misery says this is not a lane we can mess around with. We can give up this tower if we pressure them elsewhere on the map, like this mid lane. But still, it feels like DC are playing very reactionary right now. This is still space for CCNC to catch up, and Puck needs a lot more if he's going to snowball and carry DC throughout this mid-game. Yeah, something mentioned that this this late game with Storm Terrorblade looks definitely the scarier of the two. The hookshot not going to land from Zyze. He was looking for Demon there. Will not be able to uh, chase him down with that missed hook, and Storm was ready to follow it up, but the retreat is now on, and this invis rune is not going to be claimed by Zai, I can only imagine. There we go. Bulba picks it up after stunning up Zai. Zai's pretty tanky with the strength treads, but not sure they've got the uh, ability to get him out of there. The coil going to pop. He's just trying to run his way, and with another battery assault, he may be close to surviving this one. Bulba going to take a lot of damage from this if he's not careful. Mason trying to chase him down. He's one more right-click. The TP coming in from Prophet, and Zai... Viper striked up with the Grave is going to get ticked away. The Magic Wand Charge is not going to be expended as this is a, a nice little kill to get, but top lane Optic uh, always seem to be finding a trade somewhere in the map anytime they're losing a hero. That was actually kind of rough for DC, having to spend that much time chasing down the clockwork. Like you said, they're looking for trades at the same time, and this tier 2 tower is almost going down. I think it, yeah, it's definitely going down. There's two catapults. Yep. Double catapult, and we'll see if uh, Puck can get deny in. Doesn't do it. Misery gets the last hit. That is perhaps concerning with all the tower gold going their way. Definitely a, an early game DC needed to win because of the nature of uh, Optic having this stronger late game. Yeah, you see how much damage they're lacking. They're, they're stuck using three or four heroes to get kills, and that's exactly what Optic Game is doing. They're just trying to pressure towers, not for the sake of taking map control themselves, but for basically forcing DC to chase them around and playing this reactionary game. And since they have superior split push on the side of OG, or on the side of uh, Optic. That they, they do, they are favored late game because they have a, they, they both are playing this pickoff game with the Prophet and the Puck and then the Terror Blade and the Storm. Uh, and one team, honestly, the heroes just counter the other. Yep. Favors Optic. Do these item timings change anything? Puck getting a blink, Prophet getting an orchid, both items fairly close, at least the Puck blinked. Is that going to create more openings for DC? They definitely have this window where they can punish the Terror Blade and the Storm before they get their big items up, the Bloodstone plus one more item. Um, the Manta plus the Dragon Lance on the Terror Blade. They can definitely have this window, like you said, with these items that they're going to hit, but they're going to have to really turn up the tempo of this game if they, they want to yep. change enough, basically. And we've seen what Zai can do. It felt like he got this level 6 and hasn't been finding kills since getting 6, but he's been able to create space in the same way he did in the laning stage. Just room for Storm and Terra Blade to keep farming. So Zai, while he may have thought he would be getting more kills and having a better time with the, the start he had, has been able to at least still help out his team. And he is looking for that Midas, perhaps recognizing that. You know, we've got the late game. I just need to buy whatever items I can to just maintain some level of farm. And for DC, this definitely puts even more pressure on them as they do complete the Puck Blink Dagger, though. This is pretty much like the same from last game, I feel. You know, they, like you said, DC are very reliant on their pickoffs now. And Optic Gaming, they're just going to farm away. I don't think they're going to change their formula now. So we're just going to have to wait and see whether or not DC is going to be able to change the course of this game. Yeah, they are grouped up here. Looks like this is going to be a smoke here. They stop. Oh, okay. MS says, yeah, he can keep farming those ancients if he wants. He can always TP in later, which I imagine is going to be the plan. Show them on the map so your opponents are less suspicious as they do converge towards this mid lane. They will catch sight of PPD. 
Potentially not Zai here. The bigger kill is in the jungle here. Can they find Pyka? Oh, they pop him. They get the green call afterwards with the Veil. They should have enough damage here to bring him down. Can they get the crush as well? It doesn't look like they'll need it, but here comes Zai. Oh, he gets the he gets the cogs on the three. They are trapped inside here. The damage is going to be monstrous as DC oh, will lose three. Geez. Maybe even a fourth. Can they get the disable? They do. They catch MSS with the battery assault. He's going to go down four for one. DC, not worth. What a hook from Zai. <laughs> That just shows like the game plan between both teams. The, the Optic just has such good counter initiation between the Dazzle for saves and the Clockwork. For the other. I mean, obviously that was a sick hook play and the three man cogs. Uh, but they just have to expend so much to kill one hero on the side of DC that their rotations are honestly quite predictable. In regards to maybe they don't know where they're going to be, but they, they you know that Optic Gaming is ready to respond with everybody. And that's yep. exactly what they did the minute they saw the Pyjack. Feels like anytime DC gets something, there's a better trade for Optic. Like DC are the ones making the plays, but Optic are the ones just making the better responses. Speaking of responses, Enchantress has just said, I'm just going to farm this game. Like, Misery was casually like top two net worth there, drops a little bit, but with this Midas, he's already hit level 10. He is insanely farmed as an Ench. That is scary for a late game, but don't, do not mistake. That, that is a support. She deals probably the most damage out of any support in the game, and she doesn't farm at all, so the Midas just kind of yep. secured that she'll Top lane. Out. They're going in on MSS with CCNC, Storm Spirit, solo kill. Going CCNC's way. May pay for this with his life. Bob there, but no follow-up. Not sure Boba can get this kill. CCNC should just be able to turn and fight. Without any additional rotations. It's mid lane, meanwhile, where the Viper has been gone on Zai again. Finding these initiations, but unable to follow it up with the creep wave there to protect against the battery assault. Back to top lane. CCNC being chased down. Quakefer's there now, and this should be a kill as Bulba gets the last hit to bring down the Storm. A nice 481 ba gold bounty. At least going to be some kind of a consolation prize, and also give Bulba his Blink Dagger, so not only the Puck, but also the Slada with Blink now. That was a really important kill for them, getting that for Bulba, like you said. Now that they have a Blink Dagger, they have more avenues back into this game, you know, he's not, not only reliant on the Puck anymore, he can also find kills by himself and set it up for MSS to TP in. They just smoked under a Dire Ward, the scan then scattered them out, they may know, yeah, they instantly Rocket Flare Rush. They know this is going on, will Optic commit to this? They don't seem to care. I think there was a stole, yeah, stolen rocket flare from Rubik. They, they care a bit more now okay. as they realize, yeah, this is probably not the best. The blink dagger on Slider make this even, makes this even more problematic. What isn't up yet is MSS's Orchid. That feels like an essential item. If you want to go in this terror blade and he gets grave, you need to have perhaps a silence to stop that Sunder coming out. I can't believe how rich this Enchantress is. She has more farm than CCNC and. Yeah. Uh, that's really scary for the line of DC. They don't have the physical burst damage, other than from Viper's W, the Breaker passive, um, to actually bring her down at any stage of the game. They obviously have the puck burst, but at some point, Chance is going to have to help, but that does not bring her down. Yep. We'll see if Puck can keep up. Has got a potential Dagon queued up. Maybe it's going to be a Yule Scepter, but just the Staff of Whiskery for now. Maybe trying to make up for some of that lacking damage, but Koifa off to a good start. Top of the net worth. And as perhaps he, he should be with all the help because this is the hero that DC have decided to prioritize in terms of farm. They left the Viper kind of on his own. There's a gank maybe coming in here. Storm and Clockwork could kill this puck. They're trying to bait out the orb here. If he uses this orb, he could be in trouble, but goes for the silence instead. Quick for Oh, okay. MSS behind. Drops a ward. Okay, this... That was really good awareness that he did. Yeah. If he did, I think it very likely would have been a kill. They may actually try and go on Zai themselves. They've got the, the lane ward here, but no, they, they're too close to a tier 1 tower, they decide. It's a little too risky. They're right next to the tier 1, and they don't feel very comfortable, especially since, you know, you, you've seen what they can do in terms of reaction. Yeah. Instead, it's going to be a three-man smoke from the mid lane. Slada, Rubik, and Viper, knowing that they can have nature's profit appear anywhere on the map, but, in fact, already in position at this top lane, and I'd say most importantly, they've got the observe ward there, so they have decent vision around the area. Definitely a good idea to fight around that vision, but it's Optic themselves with a lot of visions around the map. Three Observer Wards, Rocket Flare. They seem to sense what's going on because they, they are playing very defensively here. They're not even hug, hanging around that T1 tower. They backed all the way back to their Tier 2. Yeah, I think it's kind of obvious considering that no one is showing himself yeah. on the map right now. And I think yeah, at this point, they're kind of used to their playstyle, so they have a expectations of what's going to be happening now they've seen game. each other too slider smoke was popped got pinged out meanwhile the dire ward in the mid lane sees out optic gaming's heroes rocket flares flying around both teams with really good vision of the other so 
making it difficult for either team to get the initiation. More DC, because DC is the ones looking to play the early to mid game and be the the aggressors. They're playing against, what, two Midas's right now and a Terrorblade Storm that are also farming, so they, they don't want to sit back and farm. Yeah, this goes into a stagnant farm game that definitely favors Optic. And I, you see they, they know that no. themselves by going to double Midas and run the clock, which I didn't expect myself. But if, if they're able to secure the late game on those two heroes, because they're, the, most of the farm on the map is going to be taken by the Storm and the Terrorblade, so those two heroes will be relevant later on. I really like that adjustment on the side of Optic. Yeah. It feels like DC, even though they were down like 3 to 4k gold, are actually maybe stronger as well right now because of the fact Midas's are in play, they've got Puck, Slaughter with Blink Daggers. Oh, absolutely, and you see that Optic, while they're playing on the defensive, where they don't want to lose all their buildings, they are not trying to fight. They are not looking to take any engagement. And DC are the ones, like you said, they're trying to force the engagement, force the tempo of the game. As long as Optic plays this uh, cat and mouse type game, I think it's yeah, that's a tough one, but it's it kind of is a numbers thing. Where for DC, there's a certain no, like quota of kills they need to keep on getting. They can't just get that one kill and say, "Oh, we're we're fine now." They need to turn that into towers, into Roche, into more pickoffs over the next five ten minutes. So we'll see uh, where DC look to go because they need to punish this optic greed right now. Yeah, I think they're going to need a lot more than that, and I think optic. They're almost ready to fight. I, I think as soon as they finish the Bloodstone on Storm and the Manta Dragon Lance on the Terra Blade, I think they have all the tools they need to just run over DC. I think they'll be it'll be more than enough to take a fight. Yeah, this Manta's going to make it a lot trickier for them to use these silences to combat the Terra Blade. There is some potential to just burst him down before he can even definitely before he can even get graved. You know, Puck with a Dagon. Some these is this a Dagon or is this going to be something else on the? I hope it's a Dagon. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Dagon. I'd say it could be a Yule Scepter, but yeah, I like the Dagon better. Just burst him down before he can even get graved. Uh, could give you a way to, to deal with him. But not some really good optimization there. He knows exactly Optic Gaming's plan as well as their way of winning team fights. And by bursting the Enchantress, who is very fond as well, yeah. and giving that extra bit of damage uh, is really huge. Like you said, to stop the reaction from Dabble as well. Ench is on 800 HP with Intrates. That's, uh, that's a dangerous place to be against a Veiled Dagon Puck. And they are uh -oh. in the Roche pit. Misery could just get bursted here. He's tanking Roche here. He needs to be careful. There's going to be a blink crash. They're going to follow with the puck. They're going to instantly take out two. No grade for PPD. Just not even possible with how fast they took those two heroes out. PPD should be dead as well. Gets lifted up so he can't grave. And that is a perfect Roche counterplay. I think they had the train in there at the start. They didn't 100% know Roche was going on. But they now set themselves up to take Roche themselves. That is exactly what DC needed. Well, you're talking about... Him before he can thunder, that was as fast as it gets. He just blew up, and it was Mason's helm of the dominator. He dominated a creep. He walks in. They see exactly what's going on, and before Optic Gaming can even react, Boba just blinks in and great two man crush. Top lane. Zai could be in trouble now as well. Hook shot away. It looks like that may be enough to save his life. He's going to TP as he does it, and ooh, Boba couldn't quite get the blink crush. But. This is exactly what DC needs. They got the Roche now. They, they're they basically turning the map control in their favor. You talked about the item timings. They hit the Blink Dagon on Puck. The Slaughter has his Blink. The Nature's Prophet has, the Orchid, has his Orchid. It's hard, it's hard for Optic to split up and farm like they want to. And if they can't split up and farm, DC has an Aegis. I think they this game is definitely going in their favor. This is exactly what they need to keep doing, I think, is the main thing that we were talking about. Is it is not enough that, they keep getting, that they've gotten these kills. If they keep this up, that is exactly how they're going to win this game. Yeah. I think we even see Puck going for the, the spell amp instead of the plus 50 damage. I feel like that isn't even that common on Pucks, but with the Dagon, he's going to get extreme value out of this. Down the mid lane, go Optic. They're smoked up. Interesting, they uh, are the ones being the aggressors. They're going to ball in from afar. They're trying to catch him by surprise. does not get the TP cancel, though. Oh, just out in time. I think they realize they can't split up and farm anymore, so that's why yeah. they're trying, they're, I think they're just trying to open up the space somehow. Look for a kill, they with the Bloodstone on Storm. Anything that they can get to open up space to farm, because right now they're a huge threat of dying. Oh, in the bottom lane again. Another gank eluded by DC as Puck orbs himself out of there and. Feels like Optic are grouping up because of that, but they need to be careful because DC may be running their way soon. With this Aegis in hand, they're going to scan them, they know where they are could lead into potential aggression here. Bulba's now going to force staff to go with his Blink Dagger, and they're going to use this Viper in the front lines as bait in the mid lane, but it seems more like bottom lane where Optic Gaming, for now, are focused. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves on the other side of the game, where DC was originally five-manning, yeah. trying to find kills. 
tables have turned. Optic is now five manning, and DC are using the the strength of the Nature's Prophet to split push the map and just split farm or split push now. Definitely still a scary Terrorblade with this Manta Dragon Lance, and that's maybe where Optic are going to feel like they can go for this five man. Mason in the front lines here going to pose a big threat here as the ball lightning goes in. They're looking for the side, they try and go on Bulba first, but they instantly lose Terrorblade again, blowing up before the Grave can come out. Demon in the front lines is coiled up, but he's A-OK -okay for the time being. The Grave going to help keep Zai alive for a little bit longer, should die once that Grave ends, and will do so. That's three dead without a single kill picked up by Optic. A fourth goes their way, the TPA from PPD. He's like, I did all I could, got, got a Grave up, but this Dazzle TB has been very much negated by the way DC have played. No Grave Suns is yet to happen this game. Yep. Even after those four kills, they were instantly hunting CC and seeing the top lane, TPing up there to try and find him. But he's back to safety as DC, perhaps in a position to push forward now. Still a little bit of time left on this Aegis, so a well, good couple of minutes. So they likely can get at least a tier 2 tower, maybe even more out of this. Another tower at the top lane that could be gone for as well after they take out mid. Yeah, that was some very impressive team fighting from DC. They're just making it so diff difficult for PyCat to... Uh, you know, make a decision on whether he wants to continue or not. Right. They chip away at him and, you know, oh, hook oh, shot hook comes shot in. in. They go on the Viper, maybe not the best target with the Aegis, and Zai could get punished, but they're going to fold up with a Metamorph. Storm going to go balling in as well. Zai getting low here. They're going in on Rubik. Can they bring him down to start things off here? Mason going to turn and fight. Takes out Zai, not quite yet. Barely gets the kill here. He's on the high ground and getting the stun. Ball, but catches out too, but needs some backup here. Here it comes. It's going to be MSS coming with the Shadow Blade. They need one more right click. They bring down CCNC. Pycat does get the Grave Sunder off, helping bring Mason low, but Mason on the high ground is going to be A-OK, -okay. and Pycat no more Sunder brought down. They get the team wipe. It's a 5 for 1. All they get is a Rubik, as well as an Aegis, but that is exactly what that Aegis is there for, as DC crush a team fight. What happened there? Just a Looks like it was just, it was just a little too much for them to deal with. Like they, after winning that 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 Roshan fight, you know, just by picking up a couple of items and having the Aegis on hand, they committed so much to killing off the Viper once, and not having anything else to deal with the rest of the team is definitely going to be the downfall of your of your team fight. Yeah, that's just the Aegis factor in a game like this where we talked about how DC is just going to try to jump you and burst you all down. So if they don't jump first, like Zai did in that team fight, then they're just going to get jumped themselves. So they get they feel forced to jump. They kill the Viper, but he has Aegis, so he just comes back alive, and now they are in the opposite spot that we saw early on in the game, where DC was having to expend four heroes to kill one, and now it's going the opposite way for Optic Gaming, because DC, like you said, just has the extra items. Did DC get kind of too greedy this game, or did should they have, I'm sorry, Optic get too greedy this game? Should they grouped up as five earlier? Like, where did things go wrong? Because the early game, we talked about going so great for them, and it's going to go from bad to worse here. They get two more pickoffs. They may even just GG out soon if they're not careful, because... This game quickly slipped away from Optic. Dagon 5. Oh, goodness. As, as a Dagon 5 with a 8% spell amp. He's even gone for the minus 5 second waning rift cooldown, so constant burst damage coming out from this puck. Well, that's pretty damn good. He even gets spell amp coming out from all... 8% spell amp coming out as well from all the int he's got, so... Definitely scary stuff. I, I definitely agree with BSJ. In terms of itemization, I don't think it was too greedy to go for all the Midases, but if you're going to invest in that many Midases, it is definitely greedy to go for objectives like Roshan. And... After they lost that Roshan, all the control they had in the game was completely gone, and DC just were too strong for them to take in a team fight. So I feel like this game's kind of a different version of the last game. In parts. It's like the same story. DC just needed that that one big fight uh, to, to just take control of the map and stop the snowball that uh, off the game might have had. Yep. Uh, in this game, they got it. They got that, Rosh that big Roshan fight, and now you're seeing the effect. Because I feel like this would have looked very similar to last game, because DC lineup just relies on killing a lot of these games. Optic Gaming, on the other hand, is playing very defensive last game with the Naga, this game with the Dazzle. And you're seeing what happens when they can just jump you and kill you. Oh, we're going to see the bottom lane. 
Yeah, they go in an MSS. The four stuff away from the puck, at least going to keep them alive. But yeah, it's, it's constant pick off. Slider's even picked up a Shadow Blade now. They've got so many ways to initiate in, find those picks. Rubik's about to complete a four staff. It is constant kills. We do talk about Optic. You know, they've got this maybe better, scarier late game. Storm plus Terra Blade, Enchantress scales well. Can they still get there? Down a lane of racks with this big a gold deficit. Is it still possible to reach that point where they can turn this game? I, de I definitely think it's possible, but it's. A f I feel like it's a very low chance. <laughs> I feel like they're in the opposite spot, but it's even worse than DC was early on in this game. They have to take one or two huge fights on the side of Optic, and I don't feel like DC's really going to give it to them because DC has so much pickoff potential with so many different heroes. They have no reason to group up and give Optic a favorable engagement, so it's definitely possible, like you said, I think, but it's more reliant on DC messing up than it is on Optic yeah. in the right players. Well, and something Optic don't have as much as they have this great late game is they don't have that big team fight, and that's... Perhaps saying that Puck brings a little bit. I mean, it's not huge team fight, but Puck Slider at least gives you some pretty good AOE control and ability to team fight better than what like Storm, Terra Blade, Clockwork do. What a very single target focus. You look at heroes like Enchantress as a support. So. You can just tell DC with their items. It's just honestly great itemization with the way they play out. They went back with bots on Puck to keep up the split push. They went for Shadow Blade on Slider. They just want to keep the pace fast and they want to keep it pick off the range. Of Yep. Well, they now smoked up, maybe looking for that killing blow. One more big team fight could spell a second lane of Rex, could spell GG for Optic Gaming as no rush for another minute or so. Maybe another target and goal they're going to be looking for as time goes on. But for now, it is just going to be securing those shrines. Mid lane, meanwhile, Zai, very close to Bulbous Slider, but not looking to initiate right away. Vision, map control, heavily favoring DC right now. I wonder if it would have been worth it for PyCat to ignore the ultimate orb and just buy a Hood of Defiance. Would that be enough to save him from this burst? I almost rather, I guess, I mean, for me, it's like you'd rather have the BKB. Obviously, that's a lot more expensive, but at some point, you're going to need the BKB this game. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and eventually, they're very likely going to see something like a Hex on Puck 2 if you need it. All right, I got it. Hear me out. An Aeon, Aeon disc. disc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an Aeon disc against the Puck is maybe the counter. Maybe PPD should invest in one. That way... <laughs> oh, it's a 100 second cooldown. Okay, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Dagon 5 is, uh, what? 15 second cooldown? There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if that had a shorter cooldown, that would, in, in theory, make sense as a counter to the puck, the bats. <laughs> <laughs> they smoke up though. Optic looking for a pick though. They well oh, they jump right the into the the tree and Zai could not find the angle and DC recognizing they're maybe not in the best position. Uh, not going to look to initiate right away. They want to get all the info they can, find all the vision of these heroes. And Puck is also split pushing bottom lane. Does not have his boots to travel for a couple more seconds. So they'll give Optic a bit of space to breathe in the top lane while they set themselves up to take Roche. Top lane though. Here they go. Shadow blading in. There's Bulba on the Slada. Wants to go in misery, and that's going to be an easy pick. Quake for 12 kills, 1 death, and 10 assists. He's had a, a standout performance this game. And Roshan is now back. This is looking harder and harder. Yeah. <laughs> we we kind of, you know, questioned it a little bit here at the casting desk. I think uh, Quake for showing this here can definitely do just fine keeping up and dealing with whoever it may be. They get health items, well, I, I just keep upgrading my Dagon. And he's getting close to that level 25 even where... Oh, I want to see that new talent, but I think, with his build, yeah, yeah. I think with his build, he's going to go 420 GPM. That's hard. You get 25, you're kind of close to that 6-slotted, but... Picks up a Mystic Staff. We'll see if that's going to be like a Sheep Stick or what, but... Rapid fire dream call is pretty hilarious. Yep. It's one of those things, maybe he's far enough ahead where he's like, let's just see how this works and how strong it feels in a competitive game. <laughs> it bypasses the uh, the inch untouchable, you know? That's true. Oh, it also <laughs> yeah. Getting a refresher if you really want to take yeah. that approach. That's how you get 420 GPM. You buy a refresher, you buy Shiva. I, I, who's going to survive? Yeah. Yep. Was that. Just second roast, no, no roast shard yet. Just second. Okay. Aegis cheese. 
Yeah, Cheese on MSS's Nature's Prophet. Now there's a BKB as well. He's going for a Sheepstick, so at least one, possibly multiple hexes coming DC's way, and that's where uh, Storm, TB are going to have a really rough time maneuvering in these fights. I mean, Storm just doesn't have the, the farm. Like, he's got a BKB, but how's he going to kill people with this BKB Bloodstone? Ooh, top lane could see an initiation here. Bulba can get a blink stun off here, but is kind of lacking teammates immediately for the follow-up. And this just seems Optic's best bet. Keep going for this split push. TB's just constantly pressuring bottom. It seems they don't want a team fight. They just want to pressure these other lanes. I think it really hurts terribly that he has to play this way, though. He's still only sitting on level 16 and a half because of this. He's just never in EXP range, and it would definitely help him a lot if he was able to get his level 20 talent for 10 all stats. I think every point helps at this uh, at this stage of the game. Yeah, all the hell they can get. We'll have a Scotty soon. Don't really see any scenario where saving for buyback is a, a good idea when you're behind this much. Really is all in and hope for the best if you're in Optic's shoes. But with an Aegis and Cheese, they're going to know that push is going to be coming soon from DC where they attempt to break high ground. Maybe waiting for a key pickoff first, though. Yeah. They just got the puck as well, his sheep. So they've got double sheep for this upcoming fight. And perhaps uh, the more important item for pushing is going to be this AC on Viper. He's in the front lines with uh, the Aegis and the double damage. So could see some good chip damage coming out in this tier 3 tower as Optic Gaming going to be pressured to defend now. Hookshot going to go in. They want to start this fight. They go in. Trying to break, break burst on the counter. Oh, he barely gets off the face ship. Can he get out of this one? The reflection is on him here. Quick, but can't get the blink out. He's dead. He bought the, the hex as well. He does not have buyback here. Mason getting low will have the ages to play around. He'll be respawning soon, but Pycat potentially right on top of him. The hex coming out. That's not going to actually get the kill on this Terraboid, who may still be able to get a Sunder off. Does get it off onto the Viper. Viper needs to be careful not to overstay his welcome here. Puck does not have buyback to play around. Pycat looking to just get back to the high ground. Optic of help for the time being. This Viper needs to be careful about going back in. No more ages to play around. Demon, okay, he barely survives. Somehow gets back to the high ground without dying as Bulba blinks in with a crush, then force staffs himself back to safety. Seems Optic don't have the mana on Storm to chase for more, but they have held their high ground with a formidable defense. A great call to just jump this puck that's been so problematic for them to deal with. I definitely think that's a huge win for Optic Gaming, being able to kill off that puck. Well, how much did the gold did he give out? Give a thousand gold to Misery. That's uh, not too bad for an inch in the late game. It's pretty good. I always like to call that step one, because even though it is a great win for them, that's the best it's going to go, but there's, there's still a long ways from being back in this game outside of Optic. That is exactly what they needed from that. Um, yeah. Next time they have the Aegis and the, the fresh Shredder and the Cheese, I, I, it's just going to be that much harder unless they win another pipe. And while they hold their axe, they don't actually really progress forward because they get one kill out of it. Um, they it's obviously... Yeah. They trade evenly. It's a ma very minor gold boost for them. And DC are uh, going to be right back, maybe chip away at this top lane. Or, or like you say, wait for the next Aegis, wait for the Rose Shard. They've still got cheese. Or perhaps what they really need is like pick off first because just trying to brute force your way through the high ground, it kind of sets your opponents up. Puck needs to not get caught with that initial hook shot in. And this time around, we see Quake the position much further back. Cliff already being used here as Storm on the front line is going to be looking for that ideal target to go on. Looks like they're still wanting to force this tower down, that's simply because they know that PyCat does not have Metamorphosis. Yeah, that's that's a good point, and they perhaps learned some of the lessons from last fight with Quake for getting picked at the start. He's going to change the way he positions and takes and approaches this fight, but the bit of time goes on and Metamorphosis is now back up, and you can kind of see DC, as that cooldown comes back up, are also completely fallen back. I think they should probably wait for Puck to hit level 25. Just have them sit on a ton of gold or at least fight with that new talent. I, I yeah. think it's definitely going to be the gold, though. And so he could buy you know, something like a Lincoln yeah. or BKB. I mean, if he has buy back there, theoretically... Well, I mean, I don't think he necessarily wants to buy back there, but it, it just gives him a lot more security. If you have this long, drawn-out fight where you kill a, a Terrorblade or a Storm, you can buy back and try and win the game. Bottom lane, Storm goes balling in from afar. MSS gets the hex off as well as his BKB, and CCNC 
and the gem in hand will just get the hell out of there, using up all his mana for this one. Important to have this gem because the Dire Vision is what's going to set them up to get these pickoffs, not to mention this Shadow Blade Hex Initiation from MSS. So Storm, a bit more safe and secure because of this. Very defensive with his items, so BKB Bloodstone into Plate Mail. This is not necessarily what you want to see in your Storm 38 minutes into the game. But I feel like it is... It does feel like he needs it. <laughs> yeah. Even if you have damage items, what good is it going to be if you die instantly? Sometimes in matches you just don't have a better In this case, at least in this new patch, the Shivas will give him extra mana again with the change that they made to end. So it's actually a nice item for him as a sustain item as well compared to old patches. It doesn't make it much better in terms of, you know, you don't want to go these defensive items more so than like the Orchids and the Sheep Sticks. Uh, but it's definitely better than these. Yep. Oh. And he needs it for the armor as well. Makes this hard. There it is. Puck, 420 GPM. He wants the gold. Scott. Yeah, he'll have buyback. You can now look towards that six item slot. Upgrading his boots to travel could be kind of nice when your slot is shadow blading around looking for picks. And speaking of picks, DC uh, grouping up for a smoke here. I think he definitely wants to pick up a, a Lincoln's at least. Yeah. That, that, that would help him a ton. Like the item that could really protect him. Even just not. Blocking an electric vortex is going to be what you need to save your life against this optic side. To the bottom lane they go. This is uh -oh. dangerous. He's since he is in the trees, they're going to find Misery instead. Instantly Hex here. So I'm going to look to counter. He wants this Puck. Puck getting low here. Can they bring him down with a hook shot? It's oh, going to be close to fall stuff though. F Puck, they shifted up. Can he get the blink out? Looks like he blinks further away. Quake for still in trouble. Needs to join. Gets brought down though. CC and C does have a buyback though on the puck here as the Sunder is not being used. He gets great. He Sunder's a teammate. Oh, Pycat barely gets it off. He's still in a lot of trouble. He mantis, but he still gets hit by the stun from Bulba. One more right click. The volley going to bring him down. The Lotus Orb is there to protect him. And they're actually winning this fight. They've taken out three puck buys back. Is it too late though? Because already DC are trying to get the hell out of this one. Oh, they killed the creep, I think. Okay, puck can't TP back in. It looks like his TP has been used up. Mason's still here, but doesn't have friends and. Step two, step two? And, and maybe step three. I don't know how many steps that is. Yeah. I mean, step two, step three, maybe step, you know, if they keep doing it. Uh, they're almost Ooh. back in this game. Terrorblade's going to start hitting really hard. And heroes like Viper suffer against illusion heroes and heavy physical damage. And that's exactly what Terrorblade is. And theoretically, they kill the puck while his buyback's down here. That could be catastrophic for DC. And even not having buyback when Roche is respawning is a, a really awkward, tough position for Quakefa to be in now. We'll see how uh, DC look to handle things here. Plus 1,000 night vision. You talk about the, the late game night stalker. Bulba is waiting for that night time to hit because he now has a very good initiation pickoff potential during that night phase. That is a pretty crazy new talent. They gave it to Slaughter, and I believe Wyvern's the only other one. And uh, here, like Slaughter, so as I mentioned in the draft, this is going to make it even harder for Optic to get the jump, and they're probably going to have to smoke or have a sick purple side, which he's doing a really good job of. The yeah. And that fight was such a mess. I mean, Pycat, it, it looked like he was in all, all sorts of trouble when he couldn't get the Sunder off on an enemy, but he quickly realized, like, well, let's just sacrifice a teammate. And DC don't quite get the result they're looking for. 25 coming soon on Viper. We'll see where he looks to go. Plus 120 damage is a lot, but Silence, you know, that's potentially going to be a game winner against a hero like a Terra Blade who's maybe stuck in place or a Storm Spirit whose BKB wears off. I think DC really need to start itemizing to protect their puck now. I'm really surprised to see that there aren't any uh, yeah. Solar Crest, Gib Glimmer Cape type of thing. Well. Yeah, they've been on the offensive all game and I think you're right, they need to take a brief moment to realize what's going on in these fights and adjust accordingly. Oh. Oh. Quick balls Quick coming balls. out. Let's see if we can regroup. Maybe just uh, looking to oh, any his issue. One sec. All right. See, it looks like Optic are actually grouped up for a potential smoke play themselves. PPD has it, so they want, they know Roche's. Is it up or yet? No, it's coming up very soon. And Puck has no buyback, so this is where you catch the Puck. You could just win the game, or at least almost bring it back to even. Uh, or you could just try and take Roche yourselves because that Roche shot is so valuable here in the late game. 
getting a free refresher on someone like Pycat's Terrorblade, having double metamorphosis could be crazy. Getting, I mean, Storm, one of the best, if not the best, Aegis cheese carry in the game, so... Definitely a very high value Roche for Optic if they can steal it. It is going to be Viper popping the smoke on the high ground here. Pycat instantly re retreats. He's not an initiator and does not want to mess around with that. And that probably reveals to DC exactly what Optic were up to. Both teams posing themselves around this Roche, knowing that it is crucial for this game right now. And I imagine both teams will be a little bit cautious about actually going into the pit. And you mentioned uh, the Lincolns on Puck, and that is exactly what Quake has queued up. Getting it very quickly, thanks to this 420 GPM. Doesn't have to worry about having buyback gold for now with it being on cooldown, so we'll be spending every penny he earns towards that item. He really wants to have it before this rush, but Optic in the pit. Taking the creep that DC was using to scout, I don't imagine they want to commit to this one. Finding themselves caught in the Roche pit, we've seen how fast Puck can burst people. If somehow DC can get the Puck to burst some heroes without getting caught out himself, that's where things get messy for them. Well, we're coming up to level 25 Viper. Yes. That looks pretty scary. Probably the Silence, do you feel? I feel like the Silence would be the one it's of the better. Picks. It's a five-second cooldown silence. That's it, it. It synergizes well with the picks as well. You know, you sprout someone, you drop the Nether Toxin, they actually just cannot do anything. I mean, TB has no BKB. Oh, okay. they're jumping in. Wow, they're going to go in. They want to get this kill to start things off here. They've Zai's also gone in on Demon. They want the Rubik as well as they the Slaughter. Bulba should go down here. They've taken out Viper, and that's three big kills right off the bat. Storm can't find more. They may be f able to force buybacks here. We'll see if they go for the high ground or if they take the ever so valuable Roshan. I'm not sure if they want to. Uh, prioritize buybacks. They are going to go for the split push instantly. MSS is TPing top, trying to break through this tier 3 tower back door, but he doesn't get the chance to even force a TP. Creep skipping is the part. Koikva trying to take out those creep waves as here come the buybacks. DC losing so much of their lead off of this. Can Optic take Roche though? It may be tricky with Metamorph wearing off soon. It wasn't our so we'll have it oh wow. This, these are the kind of games that make me question my knowledge of Dota, because the team that I think is winning is losing the fights every time. Yep. Optic was winning early on in the game, and the DC took some huge fights, and now I felt like it was the opposite, and you know, all the <laughs> really nice fights. Yeah. At the end of the day, it, 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 even if a team's behind, it shows if you, if you coordinate fights properly that anything can really happen in the game. Yeah, definitely. I think... We can definitely give ourselves a little more credit. We did say that Optic Gaming did have the better late game. It's just very surprising to see me take these fights when they're down by like 13,000. You know, I think if it was like 5,000, I wouldn't be surprised. Even up to like 8,000-ish. But 13,000, they're still winning these fights. And I think a lot of it is definitely because of that they are coordinating these fights very well as well. We'll see where Optic go next. The damage output from some of these heroes. Zai now having an accept. A misery very close to his. He's going to start bursting people as well from long distance. Has hit level 20 with that Ancients being taken. He's got Prowlers. He's got Granite Golems. That's the counter to the fuck day on the <laughs> They're actually going to go straight into Roche. They know this puts DC in an awkward position. They don't have buybacks. They either have to take this fight or give up Roche. And I think giving up Roche to a Terror Blade, kind of as you mentioned, could be a really bad call. They're going to play it safe, though. They're going to instantly uh, threaten to split push as well. MSS says, look, let's at least get these creep waves in the base, and if the creep wave gets in the base, I can then backdoor top lane. They realize Roche is no longer going on. Both teams with decent scouting potential. The Treants on one side, the Rocket Flare on the other, the Illusions coming into play as well. Perhaps Optic with the slide edge in terms of vision here. They're going to scan them going back into Roche here. And that's going to perhaps put DC under a lot of pressure to do something about this. We'll see if MSS goes for the back door if he comes to comes and fights. Yeah, they definitely might be too late. MSS is ca channeling the TP top. Looks like he wants to go in that T3 tower. Roche is getting low. Roche is dead. Oh, Refresher shot for Pycat. Is it? I think it should be passed over. Top lane, meanwhile. 
TP's coming in. Oh, they cancelled the TP. Okay, can MSS get this Rax? He's getting the melee Rax. They're not going to get him in time. The Storm balls in from Miles. Oh, he's going to BKB, try and force this one. Hex is up as well. There's the Glyph. He's not going to commit. He's going to let CC and C defend it. Meanwhile, back in the main fight here, they know there's no Storm. Storm has no miner as well. Blink in three man cross from Bulba, but the fall up just isn't there. He's going to back off here. Meanwhile, from the low ground team, it snipes misery. <laughs> oh, some classic Jimmy plays as he finds the kill. Because Zai just trying to hook shot himself back to base here. All in all, that's what Optic wanted. You know, they get the Aegis, the cheese, the refresher shard, I believe. I don't think. Yeah, that's in yeah. the Enchantress's stash. I can't imagine Enchantress is going to hold on to that one. And they defend their racks. I hope they get the Terra Vegas. That, that, was, that was my exact thought. And I, I feel like DC realized they couldn't contest the roast, so they did everything they could, but like we said, they held their racks. And I mean, this game all of a sudden is looking really nice for Optic, despite the fact that they're down 13k gold. I think this is just anybody's game. I mean, it's looking nice compared to what it looked like about 10, 15 yeah. minutes ago. So uh, this game is definitely anyone's game. And you, uh, you see PyCat saving a slot, I assume that's going to be for the. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Well, that's uh, problematic for DC to deal with for sure. Definitely at this stage feels like they need to just try and stall out this Aegis. I don't think we'll see DC making those uh, any kind of aggressive push. Maybe they try and use some smokes here and get pickoffs, but they definitely don't want to take any big five on five engagements into this optic side. The only way that, that works is if they burst down the Terra Blade. We saw it so many times in the early to mid game where they'd take a fight by bursting Pycat before he can get great, but now he's sitting on like 3k HP. A lot harder to do so. And the later the game goes on, the more powerful that Dazzle Grave and the Sunder become. I think he'll take the Metamorphosis attack range at level 25, but I don't know if you've ever seen that five second cooldown Sunder. That's pretty impossible. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Man, but point. 300 attack range, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> he's gonna attack from so far. Yeah, he's about, I, I think it's 900 range, maybe 1,000, once he has that 300 range. He's sitting on, uh, oh, he's melee now, I can't of course check that, but yeah, should be about yeah, that. He's 1,000, because it'd be, about, it'd be about 700 with the Hurricane Pike plus the 300. I mean, you're, you're sniper at that point. Yep. Yep. And <laughs> there's no going in. That's where heroes like Slaughter are just gonna be so incredibly sad. You can't go anywhere near a fight, even Viper likely melts, but speaking of Viper, a lot of farm on him. He goes for a plus 120 damage, so pure right-click, late-game carry. He recognizes that his team maybe lacks a bit in the damage with an MKB to deal with evasion. Oh, pick off on MSS. Can he get out of here? He gets the Hex out initially, MSS sprouts himself, but no escape available. That That's a pretty big pick off. Yeah. You don't want to commit the buyback either because you might need it for this upcoming fight. And because he's dead, you don't have to worry about these side lanes as much. That's why you pick the storm. Late game dealing with heroes like Prophet, it's almost impossible to play a hero like Nature's Prophet against Storm. You can hide all you want, but he has such long close distance range that um, it's, just, it's really hard to play around. And he has to TP out almost immediately, yep. and you see if the storm gets you off here. Meanwhile. Ooh, top lane. Yeah, top lane, the concert back door. This time there is no glyph to defend with. Puck just going to throw out some nukes here. The hook shot gets dodged as well by the Puck. Nicely timed phase shift here. Zai still chasing. Once this Ooh. kill didn't hit the dream call, and Koikva could be in some trouble here. Needs another orb out soon. CCNC's there, not with that much mana to work with. And Puck will get the orb out. Terra Blades there waiting. Could get a reflection. There's the second Ooh, hook shot hook. in. That's going to be the kill on Puck. Down for two minutes. Does have a buyback. And I can only imagine he has to use it. See? Oh, okay, not CCNC. Misery goes down elsewhere. Enchantress found by the Viper. This Viper hits so damn hard right now. And with that break as well coming out from the net, the Toxin. Very difficult for the Enchantress to hold her ground. Bottom lane though is where Optic want to go push here. They've got double Metamorphosis. The Refresher in Terra Blade's stash. And the Granite Golem there to further boost up their health. Up from 3,000 to about 3.5 thousand health on that Terra Blade. And there he is, onto the high ground he goes, pops the Metamorphosis. Try and defend this without a glyph. Viper going in, trying to chip away, doing a lot of damage here. Pycat needs to be careful here, as coming in from behind is going to be Bulba looking for that nice little stun. He gets the initiation, takes down the Dazzle, so no grave now for the Terra Blade to deal with, as Terra Blade has to be very careful, but he's chasing them back, doing a lot of damage here. The Storm getting low to start things off, has got an Aegis to play around with. Mason just carrying his way through this fight, doing so much damage here. Takes out one, and it's going to be full retreat from Zai. They've lost. Three of their five heroes here. Storm going to restore Bourne and instantly ball out of there. Doesn't want anything to do with this. TPs as he does, <laughs> leaving all those remnants behind. That level 25 talent was a lot I, of fun. It's fun. But I, 
doesn't feel that amazing though. I don't know. Do you guys feel it's actually? Like, I actually it's, think it's pretty good. It's kind of cloudy. I, I think his old tower was a little bit better, but at the same time, it's kind yeah. of hard to chase a storm. If, yeah. If he has, you know, or 300 damage nukes, so he's lining your way, his wake. So I don't, I don't feel like I know that at all. Right it's now. weird. Especially every single fight. <laughs> I think oh. Uh oh. Yeah, they caught him. They've got the hex following up the silence here. He did not have BKB to start this off. He's dead without buyback. Oh, that is costly. He was 160 gold short of buyback. DC do not know this, though. We'll see if they force the top lane. Glyph has returned. Terrorblade can buy back. Won't have Metamorph unless he uses his Refresher Shard, though. We'll see if he considers this one. DC <coughs> looking to push things here in the top lane. Yep. Oh yeah. They're gonna glyph this one, but it's still gonna go down to the Viper. With eight seconds on Storm's respawn, they oh they miss the back hook. off and they don't catch the hook. That was the kill they were looking to go for, but it does mean they don't have to use this refresher shard. They've got 20 seconds still before Metamorph is back up, and refresher shard will be held on to for now. Well, Anyone's game, for <laughs> sure. If the movements. <laughs> oh, you got that at level 20. Nice. He got the tomb as well. I think is he the only one not like level 25 on their team? I think so. well, Maybe he gave it to someone else. Either. Yeah, Pycat's not nor is Misery. So PBD just used it though. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. We'll see uh, if Dazzle can get up to that level 25 or not, but this game is definitely dragging out. Optic smoking up, trying to initiate here. Storm just balling forward, very close to finding Bulba. CCNC has the gem as well, should he have found him. This is such a tense moment. Even though it was a 14k net worth lead, like you guys said, the moment someone jump gives a successful jump, the game might just end right there. Yeah, Optics kind of set up camp right outside the DC base here, as we'll see <coughs> what they look to do with this. They've got a very strong position on the high ground with these ancient creeps as well, but the split push from MSS is what you've always got to worry about if you're in Optics, Optics shoes. Perhaps not as scary when you know you've got great catch in the storm and the clockwork. Optic may just want to force this forward, you know, double metamorph. They really want this pike at level 25, I feel, but not quite there. They're just going to brute force their way up high ground. Definitely possible. Oh. They weave themselves up. They're going to be very tanky with this, not to mention the double ancient set. They can even frenzy this terror blade if they want to. Man, that tier 3 tower melts. Amp damage comes out. Pycat can just manter it off if he wants. There's no split push threat just yet. Is TB going to press forward, the hookshot goes in, they want to catch the Viper, they push it back with the Cogs as well, Mason instantly getting low, the Storm going to fall forward, doesn't go for Mason, instead takes up the big instant buyback, Mason dead as well, he's going to buy back now, will the Optic press forward here, Impetuses go flying, almost bring Bulba down, he gets away because of the Invis, Quaver goes orbing in, Dries calls so two, low. three, catches three, the Rax can just be focused, another coil, oh no, sorry, another hookshot going to push Quaver back, he gets down to like a sliver of HP, can they bring him down, the Cogs the is there waiting, the Cogs will get him, he's dead with that buyback, Slider dead as well, DC, perhaps on their last legs here, they've got a buyback, everyone, Mason's back now as well, this looks like the end, this Terra Blade, go too down. strong, MSS dead, and that is three big carries dead, only MSS with buyback, I don't think Optic can do anything, they can refresh the Metamorphos, I'm oh, sorry, DC can do anything. Optic can refresh Metamorph. It's GG. Optic take the 2-0 lead in this best of five in a thriller of a game two. Man, oh man. Wow. Yeah. That was... It felt like we fully got to experience the new patch as well, you know? Different items coming into play, some crazy talents. That is... Uh,